and welcome to the night sky in a telescope. In this video, we'll take a closer look at Mars and find out when and where to see the red planet over the next three months. We'll also discuss why this is your best chance to see the planet until 2033 and what you might see through a telescope. Mars reaches opposition on October 13th, but what exactly does this mean? In essence, this means Mars is opposite the sun in the sky. It will rise at sunset be due south at midnight or 1am if your location observes summertime and will then set at sunrise. As a result, it's visible throughout the entire night. This is also when Mars is closest to the Earth, so the planet will appear brighter in the sky and bigger through a telescope. In fact, Mars won't look this good for another 13 years. That's because our two worlds will be fairly close together just 60 million kilometers apart, but over the next few years the two planets won't be so close. Mars will appear fainter and smaller until 2029, but will then improve in 2031. It won't appear as bright or as large again until 2033. In other words, you won't want to miss out. If you're looking with just your eyes, it'll appear as a brilliant orange-ish star. Unfortunately, binoculars won't be much help and you'll need a telescope to see the planet as anything more than a star. Despite its proximity, Mars will only appear a little more than half the size of Jupiter. With this in mind, you'll probably need a scope with an aperture of at least 75mm and capable of reliably magnifying it at least 100 times. A cheap, department store telescope probably isn't up to the job, but you can buy a good scope from Orion or Celestron for less than the price of a family meal. What will you see? The dark markings on its surface should be apparent, and you might also be able to spot the planet's polar ice caps. They usually glint like tiny stars on the edge of the planet. Mars rotates in a little over 24 hours, so stop by every hour or so to see how the view has changed. Mars begins the month among the faint stars of Pisces, with the full moon a little way to its west. It'll rise around sunset and set around sunrise, making it visible throughout the whole night. It's now shining at magnitude minus 2.5, which makes it brighter than everything except the Sun, Moon and Venus. By the time it reaches opposition on the 13th, it will have brightened slightly to minus 2.6, but you won't notice any difference. However, it soon starts to fade and will be magnitude minus 2.1 by the end of the month. Telescopically, it has an apparent diameter of 22.5 arc seconds on the 1st, which is about as good as it gets. It will start to shrink after the 10th and will be an even 20 arc seconds by Halloween. Now is the perfect time to observe the planet. If you have a telescope, take this opportunity to see the dark markings on its surface and its polar ice caps. Lastly, the Moon appears just to the lower right of Mars on the 2nd and will return on the 28th and the 29th of the month. Mars now rises about 3 or 4 hours before sunset and is easily visible high above the southeastern horizon by mid-evening. It's still moving in a retrograde motion through Pisces, but will begin prograde motion again around the middle of the month. Mars drops a full magnitude in brightness during November. It starts at minus 2.1 but will be minus 1.1 by the 30th. It will shrink dramatically too, from 20 arc seconds on the 1st to 14 arc seconds by the end of the month. Realistically, this could be your last chance to enjoy the planet telescopically, so make the most of it. The waxing gibbous moon will appear to its lower right on the 24th, and then a short distance to its lower left on the 25th. You'll find Mars over the southeastern horizon shortly after sunset at the start of the month, still among the stars of Pisces. It's also still visible throughout the night and can be found towards the southwest by about 9pm. Although it's still a bright magnitude minus 1.1, it will drop almost another full magnitude by New Year's Eve, ending the year at minus 0.2. It's still brighter than Saturn, but the planet is already long past its best. It will start the month at 14 arc seconds, but will contract to 10 arc seconds during the month. This will make it hard to see any features on the planet, but it might still be worth a try. 
Lastly, you'll find a waxing gibbous moon below Mars on the 22nd, just a little to its left on the 23rd, and then to its upper left on the 24th. So that brings us to the end of the year, but that's not all for the red planet. Mars passes close to Uranus in January, and NASA's Perseverance rover will reach Mars in February. Mars then makes a close pass of the Pleiades star cluster at the end of that month and in early March. Mars won't be at opposition again for another two years, so take a telescope outside this autumn and enjoy the planet at its best. That's it for this month. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe button and feel free to comment below. If you're interested in my books, you can find them at tinyurl.com forward slash rjbamazon dash us and if you'd like to come join the Stars and Stuff Facebook group, you can find it at tinyurl.com forward slash SNS Facebook group. Lastly, you're more than welcome to email me at astronomywriter at gmail.com with any questions you might have. Thanks for watching, and until we meet again, clear skies to you.